Hello ladies and gentlemen it is my great pleasure to host the team lease dialogue on future of work in the ONDC era it is truly exciting to converse on a subject which will define the future of india that is ONDC open network for digital commerce has recently created a lot of buzz in india and is touted to be the next upi moment india has taken large strides in developing the digital infrastructure starting with the digital identity in aadhaar then linking the aadhaar with bank account and mobile phones the jam trinity as it is called and creating an information or identity layer on top of this we built upi which is the you know the flow of payments and money on that network and now on top of it we are building a network of digital commerce which is called as open network for digital commerce this is truly transformational and the first of its kind in the world i think india is uh, creating excellent benchmarks for the rest of the world to follow ondc aims at democratizing and decentralizing digital commerce in india and uh, it was formed as a section 8 company in december 2021 using a open source protocol ondc switches the approach of a closed platform to a network which will create interoperability between the applications which are onboarded so it is not necessary for us to go to a specific application to do any kind of commerce whichever application we, we are used to could be a banking app which would have which will have if if they are onboarded on ondc can provide a gateway for us uh to go uh, and buy any product of our choice from any retailer reseller of our choice uh do a payment uh, from a uh, from an organization of our choice and uh, you know get delivery done from the organization of our choice so actually it is you know completely giving the power in the hands of consumer as we all know that uh, you know retail uh, digital penetration in india has been hovering around 6 to 7% although in urban centers we see a large use of uh, uh, e-commerce this penetration at india level is 6 to 7% as per some of the reports that i have seen this uh, can actually grow up multifolds in, in the few uh, next few years and maybe a decade uh even one of the reports mentioned that out of the 1.2 crore kirana shops uh there are only about 15000 who are commerce e-commerce enabled or digital commerce enabled all this is set to change from a gmv of around 60 to 70 billion dollars it will go to about 350 billion dollars that's the enormous power of ondc which can be unleashed uh and we see a lot of players participating there is a pilot which is underway and all this is going to uh, happen but is it so easy are there any road blocks uh, what kind of challenges uh, you know are we facing right now what kind of uh, new roles and jobs will get created in the ondc era what kind of skills are required to be successful and what kind of education programs can be developed all this we are uh, going to talk about today and it's my great honor and privilege to uh, welcome uh, none other than the ceo and managing director of ondc mr thampi koshi welcome sir and thank you so much for you know willing to do this uh, session with us uh, a quick introduction of mr koshi uh, mr koshi is as i said md and chief executive officer uh, of ondc he has been uh he has played a significant role in several e-government initiatives including the unique id project expenditure information network uh you know project platinum legal it framework uh, uh under the ministry of urban development he has been associated with nsdl as an executive director as a founder team um and uh, uh he has played key role in many digital transformation projects in india including the transformation of patient pension systems the development of tax information network and the formulation of it strategy and it infrastructure for implementation of goods and services tax in india uh, and he has also assisted world bank with pension transformation projects 
and has been to China as a member of Pension Reform Mission. A very illustrious career, Mr. Koshi, I must say. And thank you again for doing this with us. Uh, so uh, your first thoughts on ONDC, how it was conceptualized, where it stands today, and what is the future that you are creating for us? Okay, <clears throat> there are two significant developments that took place in our country, which has contributed to uh, ONDC and idea we conceptualize and implement it. First and foremost, as you familiar that the, uh, the pandemic put a lot of challenge with respect to the merchant's ability to reach across the consumer and the consumer's ability to get it from the merchants. So this was a serious consideration for the Ministry of Commerce and they took, put together a committee to see what is the solutions to be done. And they, they, they uh, <coughs> you know, the ministry, the, the ministry under the leadership of uh, Honorable uh, Minister Piyush Goel and the then additional secretary, uh, joint secretary, uh, Anil Goalji, brought in experts from within and outside to discuss this uh, this problem. And uh, you know, initially they thought we'll create a map to help the you know Kerala people to reject for the consumers and so on and so forth. They said that is all limited solutions. You know, you're not trying to compete with anybody for a problem that is presently there which may go out after some time. And what is the long-term vision that they have? So they expanded the, the, the advisory column and the working committee, steering committee to include people like Nanda Milagredi, Dr. R. Sharma, and so on and so forth, who are, and Adil Sainabhagarai, who are, has involved in large population scale uh, problems and its solutions. So they contemplated that. As you know, in parallel, there had been a lot of uh, development that's happening in the tech world of development of protocol. You saw UPI, and there's a strong community of people who are developing the foundational open source platform, which is forming the basis of many initiatives like uh, NDHM, which is the Digital Health Mission, now called ADDM, and so on and so forth. So I said, this is an idea. Should um, so they said, let's marry the demand, I mean, the requirement challenge currently, as well as the opportunities in terms of the uh, the open source solutions available enabling transactions to develop a uh, um, open network which can be global first as well as which can transform the sector on a long term and not find any short term solution. That's all the original idea of open network for digital commerce conceptualized. Then a project team was in place and they decided to set up an institutional framework and as you pointed out, they set up a company. Uh, as a Section 8 company, so that their role is to create the, the digital rail and the foundation on which the industry can benefit and not uh, something as an intermediary who will try to take advantage of its uh, positions. And that's how the whole thing shot. So we started, uh, uh, you know, anything of this population scale has to be planned and implemented in that function. And there's also something very different about uh, ONDC implementation versus any large scale digital implementation, let's say whether it is COVID or whether it is uh, tax information network or a stock exchange. Because in all this case, there's a central system which is, uh, you know, developed and rolled out by the central authority, and then uh, participations are uh, coming from various PM, ecosystem players. But a significant control on the whole thing of the Total infra and processor are with the central uh, authority. Whereas this is a network. When you say network, the network uh, ONDC in that way become a network enabler orchestrator, which means that if I just they are like an orchestra, where they create the, the music sheet and they create the and they uh, make sure that all of them uh, sing or dance in synchrony. Which means that each entity will have to come with their capability, their processes, their technology, all in compliance with the ONDC protocol that has been developed and work towards uh, developing a network. So the network can only incrementally and organically go. It's not one central system being going live and everybody using that, which is a very fundamental difference, which is not easy to imagine. So we said that our implementation has to follow that strategy. So what did we do in the 29th of April, uh, what we did is we uh, worked with many of the early adopters who had been developing their systems to meet the requirement of the open network, say that let's try to make it available in five cities for limited buying application, limited selling application, 
limited sellers, limited buyers, and an alpha testing mode to demonstrate that cascading transaction can happen across entities and uh, development can take place. So, and then uh, to develop, I mean, so we did it in across five uh, cities in different parts of the country. Then we said, let's try to scale it up in terms of uh, being present in multiple cities. So today, such kind of limited activities happen in about 80 cities. Mm. Okay, but it is only buyers by invitation. When you say invitation, it's only people of the merchants, friends and relatives coming and doing some transactions and so on and so forth. And um, then at the next stage, we said, okay, now that we develop this comfort, let's try to make it uh, the next stage of uh, going up, which is uh, in Bangor, we launched uh, beta testing, uh, wherein we said, they'll let it be open to public at large in urban uh, Bangor, and let us see how the public adoption and comforts etc. take place. While the other case also, it was a real bias, it has now been very open, anybody can which where also we implemented it, about 20 network participants are there, mm-hmm. 5 buyer platform, 3 logistics platform and about 14 to 15 seller platform already live and participating. And with another uh, 200 entities in the different stages of technical integration and another 400 and you already signed up and evaluating how the technical environment should happen. Every week we'll say about 15, 20 of them coming in. This is like big, uh, large entities like, you know, going, if you look at the seller side, large entities like ITC and Unilever got live uh, and uh, uh, the large number of uh, startups and small enterprises like Sellerwrap and GoFrugal. GoFrugal is a company which is involved in developing post solution for the grocery stores. Now they made that solution to be ODC protocol compliant so that the grocers can come in. Uh, so such entities uh, are uh, shaping their solutions and sort of growing so that adop- adoption is fairly good and the coming month we expect more such entities will start enhancing the outreach to uh, to sort of stimulate the transactions to develop a confidence. Also, in the coming three months, we'll see the beta testing will demonstrate volume building up in, across, and um, we'll go forward. Like there again, when we started, we started with only two domains, which are difficult domains, which is uh, which is grocery and food, which are hyper local. So uh, 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 add that to in the B two C side. So in the coming few like December and January, you will see other segments coming like fashion, um, from beauty and personal care, electronics, and so on and so forth. Similarly, it is so it is in no way limiting to B two C consumer goods or consumer consumption goods. It is going to be. Practically, in the next few months, you will see every product and every service which can have a catalog offer will be available. So, already our teams are working on other service areas like mobility. We have a small pilot happening in, in Kerala and uh, financial products and um, travel, tourism, and many of us. And that is B2C and then B2B2. So, we are seeing. So, uh, as you asked me earlier, in the long run, we expect every seller who has a product or service to sell and have a catalog that he can publish will make it available in this open network using open uh, using ondc protocol what it means that all of them are equally discoverable now there will be specialized buying platform who will based on the kind of clients they have they may decide okay for my kind of clients i want these products of this range and this domains. Some people will say that I would like to have a large discount sort of every product. So we will see different strategy coming. All of them will have the equal visibility. They need to only worry about what is a client they want to meet. They don't have to worry about going and listing the sellers. Sellers are available, all of them are on DC protocol. So long as the buyer applications are using on DC protocol for the buy side. In that way, they will truly become buyer agent and not seller agent. So the conflict of trying to push a seller's product to a buyer will cease to exist. And there, the buyer application will focus on getting the best buying experience, helping the buyer to choose what is good for him, what is relevant for him, and encourage. This will mean that the life is not just about large brands. For example, in an existing platform, when, when you're trying to push certain kind of product, the idea is to have few large brands. It makes sense, commercial sense. Anybody who's running such a large platform for a, the elite crowd, Today, if you look at, like you said, 7%, it's because it is meant for the elite crowd of the society. 
So the products are only relevant for them. Penetration only relevant for them. And that is the way it is going. But now, like in a true physical market, possibilities are for everybody to be available and possibilities are there all kinds of buyers to buy. So that is a transformation. In the transformation come, there is humongous potential for innovations and specialization. Today, most of the platform will try to do everything by themselves. Yeah. And that makes the whole thing very costly and anti-competitive. If you look at any other business, each building blocks is done by different entities. And they is nicely stitched together. Yeah. Have you ever seen Marvi making their tire? No, no, no. So do, if you look at our mobile towers, earlier everybody had their own towers yeah. and then they realized it doesn't make sense. Correct. So they are all, whether you are Airtel, whether it was um, Vodafone, they will use the same tower. In fact, I understand that international market, somebody like Virgin Mobile, they have no infrastructure at all. They are only yeah. a brand. Yeah, everything is outsourced. Everything is. So, and we know the technology of stitching, which we can do in the digital commerce too. There's no need to do this. That way, the the, the digital, distribu- digital commerce distribution will become a, truly a, an option and choice by the brand owner. And at his own terms. Not today, what happens is the brand owner decides everything about in the physical market, digital market, is either he has to succumb to the conditions of a you know, existing platform, which are only one or two, or he has to try to develop his own market, which is very, very expensive. And he has to build up every component, which becomes very more costly. Yeah. So these, so that's how the transformation is going to happen. So you would see a lot of opportunities for logistics companies, a lot of opportunities for warehousing companies, a lot of opportunities for packaging as a service. So each, imagine in any business, every building block can be handled by specialized entity and nicely stitched together using this interoperable ONDC protocol. And that is what is going to completely change the possibilities, both in startup community innovations happening, as well as like you earlier know, about the gig workers, etc., having a lot of possibilities. Even like you said, so since I already explained to you, service also become, even this will become a, eventually somebody will set up catalog for gig workers so that somebody can buy. Yeah. So it's a question of, I mean, the uh, uh, no market participation coming in this direction, that's just how the things are going to change. Absolutely. So, so you're saying, I, you know, I can see very clearly that everything that the aggregator was doing is getting disaggregated and unbundled and allowing specialized uh, partners to come and you know expand the ecosystem. I'm sure there will be newer type of services which will oh, also yes. Some, yeah. something that we have not thought about. Yeah. So that so if I give you a very physical uh, you know, example, we are creating the specification of Lego blocks. Somebody like him may create new blocks. Somebody like you may stitch them together and create a either integrated service or partly integrated service. And somebody else will connect them all together, just like we make. Uh, Toys or houses out of them. Yeah, yeah, and that is how it is going to work. Great, and uh, I'm sure with with a lot of um, you know youngsters looking at having their own startups and creating some kind of you know uh, software code or applications which will enable this will open up a lot of opportunities for startups. Uh, oh yes, like I said, now out of 600 or entities who have signed up, more than 50, 60 percent of them are startups. In fact, yesterday I was there in the Thai conference. You know, while it was a lot of people came up, what found it very interesting was a small group of five, about eight, ten guys who were studying in IIT Madras. They came and said, "Sir, uh, it's a very interesting idea. Can you just uh, give us some ideas of use cases? Because we want to invest and build on it." I mean, that was uh, uh, okay, an example I shared. This is kind of things I'm hearing from very many uh, places. That's why you will see a lot of interest from the VCs because they feel like that we want to increase them. So uh, that's why it is an open network throws open humongous amount of possibilities. And that is a transformation missing. And this is not whether innovation or service or e-commerce does not get restricted to somebody's private property. It will become a true marketplace, truly omnichannel marketplace. Great. So, so even people, you know, who needs to do the cataloging for those smaller Kirana shops 1.2. That could be a service. That will be a service. Yeah. But there, there could be a concierge service. Uh, to they might do it as, a, for example, somebody may create a SaaS service, say that he has image processing capacity. We'll use it for cataloging. 
and the cataloging in addition to picture i'd say what it is probably in all the 26 indic languages uh, you know the, it should be identified all those will become components which somebody else will choose today if somebody develops something like that where can they were they like to go on the existing player otherwise there is no option they have such humongous uh, you know negotiating capacity that uh, it gets restricted whereas here he can build his own business and he'll still be integrated by somebody else to create a completely stitch experience like you see in any other product today no? yeah and then what about you know customer grievances or customer experience management as a phase how will that happen when when we have okay i'll answer it to you in a short comment that we have recently published an extensive document on building trust in the network okay it is available at our site can be downloaded and looked at sure but let us look at this way how is the customer experience handling 90% of the critical business today i send my i call up my grocery shop 90% of them I don't go and he deliver it. Yeah. If I don't like, I'll give it back and he will do. Uh, I send my driver to buy most of the stuff. I mean, we'll tell him go and pick it up. Unless I'm going and trying to do a fitted shirt or something. Like how how does it happen? So normally, but or I go to shopper store and buy a batta shoe. Yeah. If there's a problem, I go to shopper store. Yeah. He'll send it to batta and get it done. Yeah. These kind of things will happen here. Digital commerce too. Just I'll just give you. Why this confusion happens? Imagine there's a country with no hotels, and only five-star hotel gets in Bhopal, and you will think that life can only be five-star hotel. If you go to a five-star hotel and ask for a coffee today, they'll charge you some three hundred to five hundred rupees. And if you do like this, they will change it for you. You go to the Daba Vela, they say this up, but just a few days later, both are. A person will get a lot of money. So what does it mean? It means in the market there are different kind of product with its own product quality being made available to different segments. They come into a coexistence. So how does the elite platform can manage a completely unreasonable buyer like you and me, <laughs> who are being spoiled, you know, to give you all kinds of unreasonable options, so that we become the loyal customers? Correct. Correct. Is that first? Every seller who joins the network, they will sign an agreement with the platform of their terms and conditions. Mm. So they have a contractual. Yeah. Then buyer makes a payment to them, so that money is there with them. Anybody in ONDC, you can have exactly the same group of people. Let's take the case somebody who sets up a buyer application. Let's assume that is one of the premium bank. I'm just. They say that I have only premium customers. And when any buyer comes and say, he say that I want to buy, let's say, mobile phone or a shirt, he will take all the choice and he will broadcast to the network of sellers, and he will broadcast to the network of sellers. Was my condition is that money after thirty days, if my buyer doesn't like it, if you don't like it, don't even send me a proposal. Don't be a selling quote, not a proposal. So some entities will say, I'm willing to take the risk, thirty percent reduction, so my pricing is accordingly. Somebody will say, "Yes, I'm just checking my medical record." When I respond, to that. so nobody is forcing buying application. They will force the sellers to respond. They will make an offer. People who are willing for those terms and conditions will respond. There will be many people who will do that. So they have the money in their hand. They have a contract in their hand. Completely, what is the offer? For every transaction, there is a digital contract between the buying application and the seller, which is traceable, trackable in the system. So it they can. Probably some other buyer application will say that I am running a discount shop, no return policy, and some seller will say I only sell to them at a different price. It's like saying that you can go to Jal, you can go to the Jalpat and buy, or you can go to a mall and buy. They will have different prices. So that's the way. One thing ONDC takes care to make sure that it's not a flea market. Anybody who comes in is done KY, KYC done, and his or its reputation is continuously tracked, and eventually it will be published to the whole world. See, ninety percent of the people who come to the business come with an intention of making the buyer happy, so that he can be in sustained business. If it's a flea market where you can come, you know, push a cart and sell and vanish to thin air, they will come and do a lot of fake. You know, if you go to the wayside. Yeah, yeah. We don't allow flea market guys. Correct. Right. So there is a network wide reputation. So now think you think like a seller aggregator or a seller. Your only reason why you will get business in this network 
he said based on your reputation yeah and based on the product you sell you have no captive customers whom you can push say that this is great this is great but yeah. nobody like that absolutely so in that way a model like this is more self correcting model mm. i get that that is what we need to appreciate correct and all these people will to for example a buyer application supposing there is some he will give mandate to every buyer application you have to give the facility for somebody to express their clarification grievances grievances both will go to the seller digitally the response will come there is a seller of how many days and so on and the buyer application because his loyalty is very high keep on pushing the seller if it doesn't become it will become a dispute then while the whole legal framework provide how to handle dispute we will also establish online dispute resolution framework and such a dispute will provide this as a service so now you have very clear digital evidence of what was asked for what was offered what was contracted what was delivered so the uh, you know even the odr people will find it much easy to come to if nothing works out of course the legal framework is already available so that's why i said it will as it evolve yeah it will evolve to a more disciplined self correcting mechanism correct which can where the whole activities are more digital there is such so much amount of digital footprints to ensure better compliance and better consumer experience and that's a journey the point that is there such a the, the model by itself the point i'm making at this point of, itself encourage that kind of evolution without concentrated power in one or two entities that is what we do i'm not saying the first day itself everything is hunky dory people have to learn but if they don't people who learn will prosper people who don't learn will die yeah. it has to be an outside in approach by Correct. all your participants Correct. and uh, as our, our vice chairman manish sabarwal keep saying that market is the boss yes so here the market yeah market will truly become the boss yeah correct so i completely get that and one very interesting thing which you mentioned that my earlier understanding was limited to b2c but you added the component of b2b yes okay and also what i could hear which you did not say is d2c can also be everything will come wherever there is a catalog that is made available will come so it it will again become a very truly marketplace because the same kirana shop is buying from unilever some products from no, which i can buy or i can go directly from but thing is now you think i'm just you used the word unilever will they be interested to go and kill all the distributors no they will empower the distributors and kirana stores because they are the one who is building the local relationship they are the one see for example imagine just take theoretical model let's say you order a call gate to this if they decide to send from their warehouse they have to warehouse every damn place and they will have to have people of that variety coming and deliver whereas if they map the order to the my near hood uh, neighboring kirana stores he will how know how to manage the limited inventory in a most beautiful fashion he will know how to maintain the relationship with all the neighborhood people he will send his nephew or his son and or his kid out to come and deliver at a much cheaper cost and he will be happy to replace if there's a complaint because he need to establish his relationship so that way these will only empower the local distribution channel not disempower and and whatever i require the consumption patterns are known so sometimes uh, you know i'll just get a delivery without even ordering at some point in time in the future yeah yes you know some buying platform will say that you for for she if you are okay with you know keeping track of your buy and every uh, monday i'll remind you what groceries to be bought and if you give me a standing instruction i'll just push the order yeah absolutely and, and maybe if i'm consum- and again again very interesting advertising option for somebody like let's say you need Yeah, in their uh, advertisement, let's say they're advertising for Ashirwad Data, and they can put a QR code in the corner, and every buying application will have a facility to read the QR code and show, make a request to all the nearby shops who are selling that, and make me an offer. I don't need to report anything. I just scan it, and then say three Kirana shops around are offering at this price and this delivery time. I just press buy. So the same QR code will show the shops in uh, uh, Green Park or or in um, Bangalore, but it will be different set of people. But the same QR code will work. The same payment, for example, I might be using let's say I'm using phone pay for regular or Paytm regularly for buying. So I'll scan with the same thing if I'm sitting here in Green Park. 
many shops. If I am sitting there in uh, in Bangalore, when I scan with the same Paytm on the same QR code, I'll show the shops around by. Yeah. Look at the possibilities. Huge, enormous possibilities. Do you think that customer analytics companies can also play a role um, here? Or? So, see, the thing is, no. Earlier in a platform, the platform has all the data. Yeah, so we have no data. Correct. We yeah, we have no data. Yeah, we do. The buyer application will have all the data of people what, what they search for, what they bought. The seller will have the information with respect to who bought from them, what kind of people bought from them. Correct. So then they can use that information with other third party sources. But our idea as on NDC has evolved in the probably few months time. We will uh, eventually will try to bring the open data which is non PI, non competitive. Um, uh, you know, aggregates to be made available as a common infrastructure to be made available. Yeah, that's that's actually what I was aiming at. So I we think. will take that journey as the uh, the transaction get built up. Absolutely, and I think that will further empower different sellers. Uh, yes, of course. So right. Today, their sellers have no information. No information about this. They're they're playing playing somebody game. else. They become suddenly they're playing a blind game, as you said. Yeah. Great. I mean, huge, enormous opportunities and. You know, more I know about it, it just opens up opens up more questions in my mind, and um, you know. So you know, coming to the Teamly's uh, setup, you know, we are an organization. We're continuously looking at what kind of uh, you know job roles will come in the future. Uh, you know, what kind of skills will be required uh, to manage this transformation, or uh, you know, at Teamly's EdTech, uh, we are focused on. Co-creating curriculum with about 50 universities uh, to create degree connect programs or, or postgraduate programs uh, and and offer that to to the working population uh, so that they are ready to take a future role. So if you can throw some light on uh, one is uh, the entire new to jobs roles skills perspective and what kind of degree programs uh, should we create. To to make this, uh, I don't know which degree program, but I definitely I explained to you proliferation of logistics, warehouse, packaging, advertising. All these things will mushroom. More participation happening, number of players and scale of players, and all of them, and as well as the operations of all this. For example, Kirana stores, whether it's Kirana stores or whether it is a you know chemist shop or. Whether Supermarket. They will all need people who are familiar with these processes because it's a standard process. Yeah. Right now. So this will all become critical to have skilled people to make sure the, that they, they can meet the customer expectations. Who are all trained on certain discipline way of doing business. So that could be in every segment. So what is uh, relevant in the financial products is very relevant from grocery and what is relevant from chemistry. When a chemist. So since you have serving a very very broad cross section, yeah, you like to see where the speed of transformation is happening so that you can map that. But is there a possibility? Yes. Similarly, you could even work with our team like SNM. We are also trying to develop the appropriate taxonomy for these products. And, uh, sure. How these can be offered as a catalog, some service as a catalog, and somebody can buy. So these are the kind of possibilities. We are talking. We are actually seeing a tip of the iceberg. It's like you know. It's like. Uh, Captain Kirk will say in, uh, in Star Trek, "It's a place where no man has ever gone before." Yeah, yeah. So we'll discover and we'll adopt. Amazing! That is very exciting. And and yeah. the question that I asked you before we started this dialogue was, uh, "Can ONDC enable gig workers to find out job opportunities?" Yeah, I just told yeah. you this is. We we'll have to develop that. How to make it available as a gap? Yeah, I definitely do believe it will happen. Two things: one, the need for them will happen. Secondly, maybe we'll also find ways in which they can be also that service can be available. Okay, like for example, just saying, you know, like you have something like the Urban Club. They, it's a catalog they have. They, yeah. They make it O N D C compliant. Correct. Every buyer app will be able to buy from them. Correct. For example, you might be looking at. I'm just saying, today, if I'm uh, buying, let's say that. Uh, Buying uh, uh, furniture from, you know, let's say from Amazon or from IKEA. If I want somebody to come and assemble, I'll agree with the government plan. Tomorrow, the buying application says I will buy this one, and I will just turn down and select the guy to come and so a bell clap kind of people will be there, and they'll say, I, from the same application, let you buy the the furniture as well as the guy who's assembled. 
and with the same application my wife will uh, order for somebody to come and you know do a you know what a beauty treatment or fashion treatment or whatever that she wants because at the end of it what catalog taxonomy catalog and discoverability using a common open protocol absolutely so it is changing the way the business is run changing the way the e-commerce is done that's why i will say e-commerce as is practiced today will become relevant absolutely and i think the timing is just right because while we are implementing 5g in india and penetrating more True. into the remotest parts of the country mm. simultaneously the digital commerce will will really truly take uh, it to the to the tier 4 tier 5 towns even the True. smaller villages for example some network participants are focusing exclusively on uh, rural uh, markets uh, two of them are already live in our system one is called spice money which is on the buyer side which he expects that uh, his presence in some almost two lakh villages will help him to offer assisted buying so that even if they are not fully digitally oh wow uh, it's like a digital enabled. kiosk correct you say that that's my shop i mean somebody uh, else today he came and uh, another uh, network participant for this some guy he said i'm going to enable business of some type three and i for to be digitally visible in fact uh, you're saying that like now why do we do all this programs only in uh, big towns in bangalore is that probably next time we should be trying in some smaller town which you already decide yeah so we are making a plan to have some uh, you know just like we did uh, bangalore beta i want to do a beta in a smaller town amazing so these are the way in which but it's a journey it's not abracadabra yeah and if you expect magic to happen tomorrow no will we have problems yes but the model enables all these things problems to be solved and the whole uh, landscape to evolve in a more healthier democratic place giving more opportunity equal opportunity to begin small and success coming out of delivery not any strangle hold they have either on sellers or buyers amazing i mean it's a truly transformational initiative and um, You and know. if any of your you know ecosystem partners would like to actually know how to become actually do the thing implement get in you know as uh, i told earlier like you know we will do business briefing regularly so you can arrange for it, your ecosystem partners or they can even contact us by sending a mail to team at ondc.org where we will map them to the regular thing that we do every week sure so uh, we continue to have dialogue with our clients on a day to day basis and i will definitely carry your message to them especially who are a uh, part of the digital commerce uh, ecosystem not just at everybody who has anything they'll ask them what is how are you planning yourself to be in the ondc world ondc enabled yes <laughs> how are you yeah, planning to be a standard that's question. a good question yes uh, you know i've been discussing with many of the many of the investment bankers and investors and fund managers have started making this a part of their uh, part of the review of their investments great and uh, maybe this was just a small talk in terms of you know introducing you to ondc and to understand the vision and uh, the man behind this uh, maybe we'll have much many more such dialogues uh, and include a lot of participants both on the buyer side and the, and the seller side uh, to to develop this dialogue and take it forward thank you mr koshi really appreciate you spending your time with us my pleasure